do you guys know about that Borto stream? Him using win release, dashing right to Shizuma, then getting ready to use lightning release, only to get bloodied up there. He was losing consciousness. Like, he could have died there had it not been for Kagura. And Kagura is really psychotic, so... I mean, if anything, he could have probably left him to drown because this dude is, like, bipolar as hell. Like, you know, one second he's really nice and he's all about, like, recovering the hidden Miss Village's image. And then the next second he's just ready to, I'm guessing, join the new Seven Swordsmen of the Mist and, and cause chaos around the world. And I don't actually think that he is purposely doing this. I think that he is just being abused psychologically by Shisma because of the thing that happened in the past where he almost killed a guy. Basically, you know, Shisma jumped in the way of him killing his other classmate. And that's why he's, you know, ultimately trying to redeem himself time and time again. But it's just psychological abuse. If anybody tells you as like someone that's in your life, I'm taking care of you. I'm looking out for you. Let's go do violence. They're not actually looking out for you. They don't actually care about you. They're just using you. And I don't know about this guy. I don't know about a lot of them, but specifically this guy, okay? Like, what were they thinking with this character design? When they introduced him, he basically grabbed a bunch of the shadow clones, and he's like a big, strong dude. That's his thing. But why is he wearing a mask? And why is he wearing, like... This net, like, is he about to spit a rhyme? Like, is he gonna be doing rhymes here as, like, the other Seven Swordsmen are gonna fight? Like, maybe that's actually a special ability. Like, maybe he's gonna just be rhyming some, you know, some heavy bars. That's an awfully hot coffee pot. And all the other Seven Swordsmen are gonna be going wild, like, it's gonna pump them up. But seriously, like, why does he look like this? It just, it's an absolutely ridiculous, lazy character design. And if you tell me, like, they actually sat down for an hour and that's what they came to, Shut up. I don't want to hear it. I'm not gonna lie though, this got me so hyped because you see, Kagura with the Hiramekurai is a force to be reckoned with. Before this episode, before Chojiro gave him the sword, I would have been like, okay, if he defected to the other side, it would have been whatever. I don't really care. But now that he has this sword, he is dangerous. Shisuma is dangerous. You don't think he's hiding more power? Some of the other seven swordsmen that were introduced, some of them look really creepy. Some of them look like they could be very deadly. Okay, we're gonna have to slide this dude under the rug. We're gonna have to do that for a minute. Just think about it for a second. We've even got Suigetsu, who might want his Executioner's Blade back, right? That opens up the Pandora box to maybe Orochimaru, maybe even Sasuke, maybe even Naruto coming to the Hidden Mist Village because Denki was the first one that was kidnapped, right? Boruto was supposed to be killed in this episode. He was let off. Kagura respects him enough to where even if he's a little bit psycho and he's being psychologically abused by Shizuma in order to basically like calm things down because there's no way in hell Kagura and Boruto are gonna win against all these guys. Maybe they would. Maybe Kagura would be able to defend Boruto if, you know, they worked together and they fought off these guys. But then again, I also think that he's a little bit unstable. So he would be, you know, psychologically abused by Shisuma and the other Seven Swordsmen. So even if he is more powerful, he would not be able to utilize his abilities because, again, that dude would just take advantage. Boruto's words are not as impactful because Boruto and Kagura's history only extends back, what, three or four episodes? Whereas Kagura and this guy, oh, their history extends back all the way to when, you know, Kagura was a young kid. He almost killed another kid had it not been for Shizuma taking a big wound to the chest. Basically telling him, like, that's alright. That's how it's supposed to be. You're supposed to try and kill the kids in your class. That's what the Hidden Mist Village is all about. That's how we're raised. So he's putting these words in his head. All he's got to do is constantly lay that card down on the table and he's got Kagura in the bag. So this situation, again, it could have gotten a whole lot worse for Boruto and he ended up escaping, which I'm very happy about. It extends the arc longer and longer and longer. But for all the people that have no patience at all for the Boruto anime, just understand this, the arc is going to get darker, 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 and it got real dark in this episode. I mean, it's not every day we see any blood in the series, and Boruto was there like, yes, he was gushing out some blood. I mean, I want to hear from you guys, do these seven swordsmen have potential? I mean, we saw Boruto going at it with Hasaku before Shisuma basically stepped in and told him to calm down, we need to save this for later on, and that was part of the plan. You see, they were all thinking about Boruto. They weren't thinking about no Denki. What do you mean? Of course.
course they weren't thinking about Denki. So what they were trying to do was basically find the time and place to kill Boruto. And what better way to kill Boruto than to use Kagura to do it? Because listen, on a one-on-one, -on -one, Boruto's pretty strong. Maybe Boruto could go at it with Shisuma. Yes, this Hoshigaki clan member and win a fight. Granted, in this episode, it didn't seem like that because Boruto rushed in with that stream and basically got himself messed up. But I also feel like that was partially because he was surrounded, right? Like you had the dude holding his shadow clones, you had the lady basically blocking out all those, you know, lightning release shurikens. So he was outnumbered clearly, and then you have Kagura, and Boruto doesn't know if Kagura's on his side or on the other side. He's just kind of like there. What I am a little bit scared of is these guys are gonna get axed all in one arc. And what that means is if for them to make these characters relevant and important, some of these characters are gonna have to naturally extend beyond this arc. I mean, it's not gonna be able to be like a big thing with the Seven Swordsmen if they all get cut down one by one by one in this arc, because who knows how long this arc's gonna be, but it definitely ain't gonna be more than 20 episodes. And I mean, do we have a bunch of Zabuza's in the making? Because what ultimately happened with Zabuza is he was around their age and he wasn't happy with the Hidden Mist Village and he tried to do a coup d'etat on Yagura, Kagura's actual grandfather. Tried to kill Kagura's grandfather, the Mizukage, at the time. And he failed, he ended up escaping the village. It'd be really cool if they gave us that situation with these new Hidden Mist Village members and they end up defecting and leaving, right? The Hidden Mist Village. They could give us what we really never got with Zabuza because Zabuza appeared and he was introduced as an adult later on in his life when all these events had already happened to actually see some of these personalities molding like that would be pretty cool. Although if Shisuma thinks he's gonna be on Kisame Hoshigaki's level, like, you know, Akatsuki level, I doubt it. I honestly doubt he will ever get that powerful or that relevant in the series. So I would contain my excitement about these guys just a little bit, especially because we can't slide this big guy under the rug. I I'm sorry, man. Like, what were they thinking when they did this? That's an awfully hot coffee pot. What were they honestly thinking? Now, their ultimate goal is to just create this big giant war. They wanted to kill Boruto, so that would trigger some kind of reaction from the Hidden Lee Village, and then we might have the Hidden Lee Village occupying the Hidden Mist Village, and we know how many dissidents there are currently in the Hidden Mist Village who aren't happy with the system and how things work. So they would definitely be fighting these people who are occupying them, it'd be utter chaos, right? But at the same time, come on, what would you really get done, aside from doing a bit of damage to the Hinali village and just utterly destroying your village? I mean, granted that would be the breeding grounds for the bloody Miz village, right? But your ass wouldn't be there to see it. Your ass would be in the dirt, all right? Now, at least like 10, 10,000 percent of the blame goes to Chojuro because even when Kagura was a kid, Chojuro made sure that he was in regular classes with everyone else, and you think that's great, right? But you should have some sort of backup plan if this psychotic kid's gonna blow up. And I don't actually think he's a bad person, I just think he's destroyed in the head. Which is why he ultimately ended up joining the other six members of the Seven Swordsmen of the Mist, the new Seven Swordsmen. And Chojuro didn't see any of that. That's why he's a failure of a Mizukage, and if his Mist Village gets destroyed as a result of, for instance, Boruto, Naruto's child being killed, that's all on him. At the very least, it's like 70% on him for all this irresponsibility for handing this mentally unstable boy his legendary sword. Like, aren't you supposed to be the Mizukage? Aren't you supposed to have that sword? Seriously, though. Now, all said and done, this was a pretty solid episode. The animation at certain parts was really great. Like, again, Boruto using that stream attack and just almost getting Shisuma directly with that lightning release. But ultimately, it didn't work, and I mean, that whole scene was very beautiful. In fact, I wish they fought some more. I wish those shootigans were able to do some more damage. At the same time, though, they did get lazy with the animation in certain parts. Like, did Boruto just hit leg day in between scenes? He got some fat-ass legs in this still, right? So, you can see at certain parts, they definitely got lazy with the animation, the art, but in other scenes, when it really mattered, they delivered. The stuff at the end with the, the gay stripper, what they're trying to present as a gay stripper, like, we don't know that he's actually gay, guys, but um, I have a feeling like that's they're pushing that stereotype on him. Like, the dude has a heart necklace. Look at this dude's hair. 
all right? They're trying to push it like this dude sells his ass on the streets and Shisama done used that a few times. And it's kind of sad because like, I'm bisexual. I, you'll never see me wearing no heart necklace. You won't ever, if you see me with hair like that, I really hope one of my subscribers just grabs me, puts me down and just freaking cuts my hair on some like shooting exam Sakura. We're done. This arc's about to get a whole lot better. And if there's one character I could remove from this arc, it would be me.